this nerf dart fires itself. But then how is it gonna have a job after that? <laughs> Seems like an interesting enough video concept from Joel Creates. I watched a video of it recently, you know, the hair dryer one. And this also seemed like quite an interesting video to look at. Let's get into it. This is a Nerf Blaster, but yeah. not the dart itself. The blaster is inside the dart, because this is the world's first self-firing Nerf dart. And this is the world's second self-firing Nerf dart. That's right, in just 10 days, yeah. my brother and I performed countless ridiculous tests and endured dozens of catastrophic failures in order to achieve the goal of inventing not it one, but two ways for Nerf dart to fire what? itself. And the reactions we got are priceless. What the? Now, in case the appeal of this idea isn't obvious to you, let me pitch you a quick scenario. You're slithering through a war-torn suburban jungle. You're a lean, mean Nerf machine who operates with extreme prejudice. Suddenly, you... You're an average stay in America, I'm assuming. You just... To encounter an inferior this? combatant. Instinct immediately takes over, and you achieve another flawless victory. <laughs> but what if, in a crazy turn of events, no, you more than find more. yourself held captive at the end oh, of a plastic wow. barrel? You hand over your weapon, but when asked to surrender munitions as well, a smile slowly creeps to your lips as your enemy finds <laughs> that the tables have turned. Okay, so maybe it's a bit juvenile, but this is the fantasy that yeah, we've been sold for years by Nerf and just about every other toy weapon manufacturer. And it's yeah. no surprise, pop culture and history alike celebrate the clever combatant, the one whose brains are able to outstrip any brawn. And the cleverest among them always have an ace up their sleeve, because the most effective weapon of all is to be underestimated. And what could oh, be wow. less threatening than a lone foam dart? and more of a threat than needing no gun to fire it. The concept was so simple, but would the reality even be possible to build? At least for a couple of years in the basement? There's only one way to find out. Basically, what we need to miniaturize is this. How much does it hurt? You want to find out? <laughs> yeah, it's What is it? Okay, right, there's a little bit of a curve. Turns out that a CO2 bike tire inflator makes a cool, oh. fun, tiny Nerf gun. But now we needed to figure nice. out a way to get pressure, handle, and activation switch all into something much, much smaller. I like this back button. Well, the back button's great, but yeah, I mean, the whole mechanism is huge. Now, I say huge, but it's really not. At yeah, least yeah. not when you compare it with the smallest gun that Nerf makes. And you have to manually <laughs> push the plunger to fire that one. What are we, barbarians? To push but it really the does number. paint a picture of just what we're up against. <laughs> Not only do you need enough force to push a dart across a room, but you need a reliable way to hold and activate it, all with it still looking almost identical to a regular Nerf dart. Hmm. And to be fair, it's not like my brother and I are not smart or anything. It's just that it's not like we're also not, you know, stupid. <laughs> now, when it came to powering the darts, we had three major categories. Spring, compressed air, and combustion. But spending day after day blowing up Nerf darts gets expensive. So here's how you can power yourself with today's sponsor, Factor. Factor sends Solid radio enough radio. transition, but I ain't watching that. His man has sponsors out like a solid fourth of the video, isn't it? Now I'm not sure whether to start with air pressure or spring power, because a normal Nerf gun kind of uses both. A spring-loaded plunger creates a sudden surge of air pressure, which yeah. builds inside of the dart until it overcomes environmental forces like friction and flies off the tube <laughs> it was mounted on. Now, yeah. of course, there are I like those spinning no. wheels to grip and Some throw the outside of the dart, but we need to fit our power source into a tiny quarter-inch inner diameter. So the only wheels we'll be using are these old bike tire tubes, because the Presta valves on them fit perfectly inside of a dart. A good diameter for this. Mm -hmm. By attaching a tube and end cap to the other end, it created a tiny pressure chamber. And all we would have to do to fire it is find a way to press the valve from the inside. Hmm. Oh, it, it burst it like immediately. Easier said than done. These things cannot handle much pressure. Even if we could well, yeah. find a way to open the valve, a second piece of tube that goes in that you're pushing over the first, this is dumb. We quickly found that pressurizing such a tiny tube is incredibly difficult. There's a hundred. Let's see what happens when we open it. Oh, what? There was yeah. a little bit in there. No matter mm. how we filled it, we couldn't get meaningful pressure. And I think it's because the Presta valve couldn't close quickly enough to capture such a small volume of air. Dude, uh, I mean, I know it's only been one day, but... Mm. Now, when frustrated, some people throw in the towel. But for us, we just started to throw in the explosives. Welcome to my backyard. Back it's negative five Fahrenheit. We're gonna test this. Should I shoot it at you? No. First, we put crushed match heads into a tube to try and make that a rocket. That is fucking mint. 
and once we actually got it to ignite, it made little thrust without a nozzle and generated too much heat for the foam. No thrust and it melted it. Even with obvious. dry powder and a double layer oh. suit with insulation barrier, it still sucked. Oh, but a wow. rocket isn't the only incendiary option. All we need is a momentary combustive expansion of gas, kind of like a cannon. This that is how simple. Just make a small cannon that can fit inside a Nerf. This tiny and ugly brass cannon uses the piezoelectric spark generator from a lighter to ignite really. whatever fuel is in the tank, supposedly. And when hairspray didn't work, we tried butane. Are you reaching a point where you're starting to doubt that this is quite as easy as I thought it was? Yes. <laughs> this is the best I've got. It doesn't even work. Uh, and then oh, what, you built your little air guy, but it only holds enough air to go. Th but I do have an ace in the hole, gasoline in a syringe. Now, I what know I don't hell? have to say this, but please don't try any of this at home. You ready for this? Obviously. There's gasoline in here, and it's making a spark. Why won't it ignite? Now this wasn't the end of this our explosive test, but thankfully it was the start of our spring testing. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, that's way more easy. And after surprisingly little back and forth, we finally had our first major breakthrough. Ooh. I did it. We did it. <laughs> this design uses a nail, a spring, that's and a really piece of good. aluminum tube. The nail has a notch near the top that catches on a bent section of the tubing. The side of the nail head that you press on changes whether it tilts towards the catch or away from it. To fire, all you do is press on the release side to arm it, then oh. open your two fingers and let her fly. That is a self-firing nerf dart. That is an absolutely a self-firing nerf dart. It that's was so simple. It might not have been insanely powerful, at least not with our limited spring selection, but certainly more than enough for a close encounter. And with the addition mm -hmm. of a nylon washer on the back, if you didn't know it was there, at a glance, you'd probably never notice it. Yes. Now that's cool, but what if I told you we were able to make something good. significantly smaller, significantly more powerful, and all made possible by these little blue capacitors? You what? see, the main problem with tiny cannons, tiny rockets, and anything almost entirely contained inside of a Nerf dart is activation. How do you activate yeah. the air release, or the fuse, or the spring with a tiny little dart with no space inside of it for anything except for wishes and dreams and... <laughs> you like that one? A rocket nerf dart is easy enough to launch when you can carry around a lighter that's bigger than the dart <laughs> itself. But how do you make it work with just a tiny button? The spark generator, for example, is huge, hard to press, and couldn't even ignite match powder. And even if you found a working button, how would you press it and still let the dart fly? That was the problem we ran into when we tried activating bottle rockets with a side switch. Well, it worked. <laughs> it worked. <laughs> it was so fast. I think I needed to get a little more of a delay, maybe. A hot, flammable, ergonomic failure. Yes. But those tests were the first major triumph of the capacitor-based ignition system. Oh. What? Really? What? Capacitors are like batteries that can dump all their power at once. So where mm. long-lasting button cell batteries were too weak to power a heating element, these one farad three volt capacitors could make it red hot for a split second, and that's all we needed. Well that wow. a flash cut. After all the testing and revision of failed melted darts, something pretty special happened. This is the launcher. That? First let me just make sure that it actually works. Woo! So basically, we take some flash cotton, stick it in, and we put it right into the back. <laughs> the flash cotton burns is super fast. Incredible. This produces a rapid expansion of gas and very little excess heat. So you actually Holy only shit. need a tiny amount, too much, and the dart will burst. Yeah. Or you can prevent bursting by wrapping the outside of the dart with one layer of packing tape. Hmm. Sometimes the excess cotton would even eject out the back, creating a massive fireball. The capacitor has a switch on the back to press to send its power to a tiny heating element on the tip. And though it's definitely tedious to build, it can be recharged in seconds and reused dozens of times before the heating element needs replacing. Mendo. This thing is so insanely small that you can barely even hold it. And once again, hardly noticeable, which made it that much more satisfying to test on my friends. <laughs> I have invented a new Nerf gun. Okay. Are you ready to see it? You know I'm ready to see it. This is my That's, new Nerf gun. You're missing a few uh, components there. That's the bullet. Yeah. Yeah. And no, this is my Nerf gun. That's the gun. It's like, you know how you usually lose all the darts? You lost all the gun. That's the Don't nerf. you believe me? <laughs> Wait. What the hell? How did you do that? That is pretty cool. Of course, that's just one revision. Oh. I'll set this right here. Okay. Why are you backing up? 
Oh. <laughs> That was a, uh, very threatening. I like that a lot. That's all that that is. Then you put flash cotton in there. Oh, that's <laughs> nifty. So of course, anyone with a shred of inner child is going to love these. But how far do they fire? Now, while the spring dart only got around 20 feet, the capacitor dart forced us to go outside and fired two different types of Nerf guns for comparison. Four, more than 20 feet. After David meticulously checked the distances, at 44 feet, the world's tiniest Nerf gun was hitting surprisingly close to the big gun, <laughs> and our cotton amount and loading method that was certainly mental. not exhaustive. So, with more time, who knows how far it could really go. So in the realm of Nerf for nothing, it turns out that sometimes nothing is really something. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. That's a great end. Hey, you put it down! You put it down! You, you put it down! You put it down! Put it down! I said put it down! Very enjoyable videos. I quite, I quite liked it. This guy makes good videos. Enjoy the videos. I enjoyed reacting to them as well. Enough or nothing. <laughs>